Ave Maria. Welcome to the Cornerstone, our series on the motive for the Incarnation and how this applies to our life. And today, enter Blessed John Duns Scotus, born in 1265, died in 1308, a Franciscan, a priest, theologian, called the Subtle Doctor, professor at Oxford University and the University of Paris, the one who championed the doctrine, the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, the formula used by Pope uh, Pius IX himself in 1854. And we are looking at Blessed John Duden Scotus' teaching on the absolute primacy of Jesus Christ. There's three things we want to look at today. First of all, um, Blessed John Duden Scotus saw that this doctrine was very important. It wasn't just a hypothetical conjecture or question, if man had not sinned, would God have become incarnate? But rather, the answer to that question on the primacy of Christ uh, meant is the whole universe centered on Christ and through Christ on God to give him the maximum possible glory through this one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus? Or is Jesus, does he come in this world, does he become flesh for our sakes, as a means to our gain. Uh, So you could ask the question like this, is the dog wagging the tail or is the tail wagging the dog? Uh, In other words, uh, do we exist for Christ the head? Do we exist as subjects for Christ the king? Or does he exist for us uh, to serve our purposes? Uh, So that's, for Scotus, this was an important question. He also sees the importance of this because if the Word became flesh because of sin, to remedy man's sin, then that means that the primacy of Jesus Christ is a relative primacy, relative, related to sin, contingent, dependent upon Adam's fall. Uh, Whereas if we say that Jesus was willed from all eternity, was the centerpiece, the masterpiece of God's creative plan, then this means that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the only blessed, that he is one who has absolute primacy. Sin or no sin, God willed him first, absolutely, uh, and willed all things in him. Blessed John Duns Scotus uses the philosophical principle of Aristotle in discussing this. Aristotle speaks of what is in the intention uh, comes last in execution. So what is first in the intention will come later in the execution. Uh, For example, if a sculptor uh, is going to make a statue of the most sacred heart of Jesus, first he intends uh, the masterpiece, the statue of the sacred heart of our divine Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But in execution, he starts with what is less perfect and progresses towards the masterpiece. So he would start with uh, a piece of wood from a tree. He would begin to cut away the unnecessary wood to whittle down and eventually come down to the masterpiece, which is the most sacred heart of Jesus Christ in that statue. So what was first in his intention doesn't come till later in execution. So this is important uh, when we discuss the primacy of Christ. Uh, Philosophically, God wills in an orderly fashion. He wills first in his intention what is most perfect, his masterpiece, the sacred heart of Jesus. And then in terms of execution, he starts with the less perfect. Adam and Eve, the angels, all of the created universe, and works towards the fulfillment of his masterpiece in the fullness of time, when the Word became flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. Theologically, Blessed John Duns Scotus bases his argument on the absolute primacy of Christ, sin or no sin, on the predestination of Christ. After all, in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, he speaks of how we, the children of God, were predestined before the foundation of the world. We were predestined to be God's adopted children in Christ Jesus. So if we are predestined before the foundation of the world in Christ Jesus to be his adopted children, well then Christ Jesus was first predestined. His human nature was first selected, chosen, to be united to the divine nature in the hypostatic union, this union of God and man in the incarnation. So as you can see, 
Uh, this is a very exciting, a very beautiful uh, topic that we are looking into, this absolute primacy of Jesus Christ. So I invite you to come and to reflect with us to, as we present this Franciscan thesis based on the scripture, based on the tradition, based on the magisterium of the church, and see how this applies to our lives. May God bless you. Ave Maria. Thank you.